Hi, this is tax attorney Anthony Parent, and I'm here today to speak to you about the IRS OVD updates that were released on June 26, 2012. Um, and there is just a lot of information in there, and some of it's kind of conflicting, and so hopefully uh, this will help you out. Uh, first thing, it is now known as OVDP, the Offshore Voluntary Disclosure uh, Program, not the Offshore Voluntary Disclosure Initiative. So if you see those two terms, it's the same thing. Um, now what's going on is um, since uh, the uh, 2011 initiative uh, was, was released, a lot of people have been advising the soft disclosures. Um, and um, there's been a lot of complaints about that. Um, and then there's a lot of conflicting stories about what to do. Um, and so the first thing that came out is that the IRS uh, did publish, officially publish their exception for um, anyone who's missing FBARs only and have no uh, unreported income. In that case, OVDI is not required, or sorry, OVDP is not required. Um, all you need to do is file your FBARs and uh, send in a, uh, a letter uh, for the explanation. If that's something that you need help with, uh, please feel free to contact us. Um, the second one is for, well, let's just say that you have missing FBARs and you have unreported income, but your unreported income does not release an increase of tax. Now, who's that going to happen for? It's going to be somebody who has a foreign tax exclu exclusion or some other deduction that will wipe out any additional tax that would be due. Um, so think about an expatriate, uh, something like that, or someone who actually has very little foreign account in income. You can imagine if you have an account, a savings account, that's really not paying a lot and that you got $10 in interest, that's really not going to affect the bottom line on your return. So in that case, same thing, just file your FBARs with a, with a, with a letter. Um, now, what, what is interesting is, is this third one, and there's an exception for inadvertent citizens or expatriates who never filed a U.S. tax return or FBAR, and never they have a pretty simple return. Um, and this happened um, uh, for some complaints, and I, and, I, and I spoke with a gentleman from Canada, this is probably a year ago, and he was explaining his story that um, he was a Canadian citizen his whole life, and he grew up on the border, um, but the day that he was born, his hospital was closed, so he went across the border to uh, Niagara, New York, was born, went back to Canada, spent his entire life um, in Canada, and um, then when he was down in Florida looking at a condo, uh, somebody mentioned to him that he might be a U.S. Uh, citizen because he was born in this country. And so he looked into it and he found out that, yes, he was a U.S. citizen. And he went to uh, the U.S. Embassy and they said, yes, you need to file an FBAR. Um, yes, your foreign uh, account, which was essentially his Canadian account, is subject to the OVDI. Um, and so this exception, uh, you know, I talked to this gentleman at length um, and he told me that he was in, in contact with the Prime Minister of Canada. And I think this was a deal that they were able to work out with, with uh, the, the Canadian government. Um, so that uh, we really get these people who weren't even aware that they're, 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 they were citizens of the U.S. And you can imagine maybe uh, uh, sons and daughters of ambassadors in the U.S. who just happened to be born here, but really never had a connection. Still a U.S. person. So in that case, um, the IRS has a sort of expedited, um, it's not an offshore disclosure, but that you are allowed to do this streamlined procedure where you fi file your last three missing returns, um, file last six years of FBARs, pay any taxes, and that's done. Now, you see, I, I put a, if, if, as long as you're unreported tax, tax, not income, but tax, um, never sees a thousand. There's an asterisk next to that. Why is that? Well, because there's conflicting information uh, in what the IRS has just recently published. In one place, we see a thousand, and in another place, we see 1,500. Um, so um, we hope to get some clarification on that. It's probably going to be the higher number. Okay. These exceptions are pretty narrow. Okay. And if we look at this, we can see that the soft disclosure is still not allowed and anyway, and it's still illegal. The IRS still tells us that they will prosecute anyone it catches and their legal representative. And so any uh, attorneys, CFPs, financial planners, enrolled agents, do not ever advise your client to make a soft disclosure. Because look, if you're taking money uh, from someone to advise noncompliance, Okay, I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but you are putting it at risk. And sure, ultimately, years down the road, you may, you may prevail in Supreme Court or you may not. Just don't risk anything.
just don't advise it. There's no upshot for anyone to advise the soft disclosure. Um, and we have some other news here. Um, we made our initial review of the new FAQ. And the FAQ is rather cut and pasted from the 2011 version because we're seeing many things that's actually referring to the old program. Um, but uh, the pre-clearance letter is back. And that's kind of helpful for one thing, and it actually leads into the, to, to the next thing, um, is that if you need to get an OVDI in real quick, okay, real quick, um, that's helpful, uh, the pre-clearance letter. Uh, we typically don't do them because we get our, um, our, our initial letter out in a couple of days, um, but that is just something that's back. It's not necessary. You can just do it in your disclosure letter. Um, the other thing, and the reason why that might be helpful, is that in the past, uh, it used to be if your bank uh, was under investigation, um, you can get into the OVDI. The only thing that could possibly stop you from getting into OVDI is if you're still engaged in crimes, um, if you're in, under investigation or under audit. Okay, so I, I talked with someone in, uh, we hired someone in G January uh, who had an account, his personal banker was being interrogated um, by the Department of Justice as this client was hiring us. And he was convinced that he was going to be indicted and it was all over for him. Well, we actually got his um, disclosure in, in time. Um, so the IRS accepted him into the program. Um, but that is changing. I'm not going to say you can't get in. I'm just going to say you're probably going to have a hard time getting in if your bank is um, under investigation or your banker. And right now we're seeing a lot of banks in um, Israel. And the IRS also is, says there's about 12 Swiss banks that are going to be under investigation real soon. Um, so if you think, if you're hemming and hawing, wondering which way to go, just keep that in mind. You may want to come clean um, instead of waiting, uh, instead of taking the wait, wait and see approach. Um, now, I'm just going to finish this with a true story. A uh, true story I just heard today. Um, we had a client that we talked to who was all set to go. He understood that he had to do the OVDI program. He didn't think it was fair. We don't think it's fair either. Um, but we didn't hear from him, so we finally got in touch with him. Um, and um, he had unreported income, missing VAF bars, the whole thing. There, no, there was no, no question about it that he had to do the OVDP. Um, well, he went to his tax preparer, which was H&R Block, and they just told him to do a soft disclosure. And he told me, I can't do that. And they said, oh, no, it's fine. Um, so, again, Mr. Block, um, if you uh, are watching this, you might want to get a memo out to your staff to let them know. Don't advise them to... Uh, uh, don't don't advise don't let your staff advise people to make uh, soft or quiet disclosures. Um, now the other thing too, and this is a little bit more interesting. Um, this client called the F bar hotline. Now this is not the OVDP hotline. Okay, this is an F bar hotline because there's two different places. Um, <clears throat> the F bar hotline told him to soft disclose, um, which is totally wrong so there's misinformation coming from all across the government now why did this happen why now you why why would the fbar uh hotline and the ovdi hotline say two different things well fbar again is not necessarily for tax compliance um it's part you know that's to crack down on money laundering and uh bank secrecy um and the fbar is actually handling two different hats of uh international compliance um so that they're not exactly um uh, uh up to date and they have two different missions they're trying to perform and that's exactly why uh just recently the irs did have includes the form uh 8938 which is a 100 percent irs form the ir the, the fr is a hybrid form um now i understand this is you know really confusing so to get more information you can subscribe to this channel or click below to sign up for, for our free report and we kind of we're going to walk walk you through all the various things about it and you know what what path you should take or if you want to talk now give us a call uh, we have a, a toll-free number 888-477-4257 um, this is Anthony Parent tax attorney and I thank you for watching